Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be a Sephora haul and liquid lipstick try on. It was actually meant to be a vlog because I spent the weekend in Disneyland Paris with my family, but I decided very last minute not to vlog because I find sometimes the vlogging is really hard to appreciate the moment. So I took photos instead, which I will be sharing with you guys on my blog very soon. And I'm vlogging this week, so that'll be up next Tuesday. If you didn't already know, I upload every Tuesdays and Sundays, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Okay, so this order came on Friday morning, just before I left for Disneyland and I couldn't wait. This video could have been an unboxing, but I've already unboxed it. I just wanted to rip it open and take a couple of lipsticks with me for the weekend. This is a bit of a random Sephora order. I wasn't planning on making a video, so I don't know how exciting it is, but there are a lot of liquid lipsticks. And the reason I've ordered so many liquid lipsticks is because when I feel like when they first came out, it was all about the reds and the dark colors because that matte long lasting formula is perfect for a red. So all the liquid lipsticks I have are reds or dark kind of purple burgundy colors. And at the moment I'm just having a real like nude soft lip moment. I'm also really not the kind of person who likes to reapply my lipstick throughout the day. I always forget and end up with nothing on my lips. So a nude liquid lipstick is the ideal product for me. And I've just been so obsessed with that look recently. I am dying to get my hands on the Kylie Jenner lip kits, but I haven't been able to yet. So in the meantime, there were quite a few liquid lipsticks from Sephora that I wanted to try out. I'm gonna talk you through everything I got. Maybe I'll start with the non liquid lipsticks first and then get to those and I'll show you me trying them on as well. Okay, so the first product that really caught my eye is from a brand called Living Proof. I really love this brand. I think it's co-owned by Jennifer Aniston and well, she has amazing hair, but it's just a really nice brand. They sell it in Space NK, but a lot of the products haven't come over here and there's definitely a different range in the UK than there is in America. This is from their Perfect Hair Day range, which I really like, I've tried already. And this is the Fresh Cut Split End Mender. I have really dry split ends because I straighten my hair every day. My hair's naturally dry anyway because it's curly and I just kill it even more with the heat. So this sounded right up my street because it says it seals and heals, which is exactly what I need. I like having PC hair, which is why I use wax in the ends, but you don't want it to look dry. So this is just a cream. I might put on a little bit now, actually. I tried this briefly on Friday and it just seals the ends of the hair. I love the smell of these products. It's a little bit sticky, but I quite like that because then it kind of, you know, I don't necessarily want that soft hair look. I like it to be a little bit textured. So I think that's quite nice. Oh, it's definitely the sort of product you have to wash your hands afterwards. But I'm looking forward to trying that more. I think you can put it on damp hair or dry hair. Oh yeah, apply to damp hair before styling or dry hair after styling to touch up throughout the day. And the next thing I ordered was the Beauty Blender Solid um, Cleanser. And I tried a couple of ways of cleaning my Real Techniques sponge. I don't actually have the Beauty Blender. I have the Real Techniques Complexion Sponge, I think it's called, and I love it. But I really struggled to clean it. I tried using my Dr. Bronner Magic Soap like how I use my makeup brushes, but it left it really patchy and it looked like it had some strange disease. And so I tweeted and loads of you guys recommended the Beauty Blender Solid Cleanser. So this, I'll basically show you. It's in this little pot and you open it up. It has a little pink kind of grid thing. So if you wanna wash your brushes or anything, you can brush them on that. Does that make sense? And then it has a solid bar of soap in here and you just take your sponge or your beauty blender, you get it wet under the tap and you just kind of swirl it around in this pot, keep squeezing it out under the water. And I found this worked really well. It cleaned the sponge really quickly. I'd say I only had to kind of do it twice and then it was completely clean and it didn't have weird patches or anything on it. So I was seriously impressed with this. It made cleaning the sponge so much easier. Before I was just buying new ones every time they got gross, which really isn't a good idea because they do last quite a long time if you look after them. So I'm really happy I picked that up. Definitely a good buy. The next product I've had my eye on for so long, but it's really not an essential. So I just never found myself picking it up. It's from a brand called Tatcha and I've actually never tried anything else from the brand. It's a skincare brand. I think Anna really likes it. And this is the Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. If you wanna get me to buy your product, seriously, put the words luminous and dewy and mist in the title because this just sounds so up my street. I've asked around, I think it was Anna I was talking to last week who said that it's quite an oily spray, so she finds that she has to avoid her eyes if she's putting it on after she put her makeup on. But it's a really light mist, it smells nice and I really like spraying like makeup setting sprays on my skin. I pretty much use them every day because I find that I get a bit like bouncy happy with my 
foundation sponge and I end up wearing a bit too much and then the spray just really like meshes the makeup into my skin. So I'm gonna put up a clip now showing you my skin before and after applying this mist. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, it didn't really make a dramatic difference to my skin, but it felt really nice. And I really like applying these throughout the day. This is what the packaging looks like. I think it's really pretty and it's kind of nice and small. So you probably could put it in your handbag, although it is a little bit heavy. So yeah, I'm gonna put on a bit more now. I think it just feels really nice on the skin and it feels like it's doing a little bit more than say the Urban Decay ones that I use normally. It feels a bit more like skincare rather than just like a water mist. Okay, so now onto the liquid lipsticks. And I bought from two brands, Anastasia, which have, they've just bought their liquid lipsticks to the Sephora website, which is so exciting, but they didn't have the shade I wanted, Pure Hollywood. They had sold out, apparently now they're back in stock. So gutted because you can't really order one thing from Sephora if you're ordering from the UK. So that's really annoying. But I got from Anastasia and I got from Kat Von D. So I will compare the two and show you the colors I got. So let's start with the Anastasia one. They are just called the liquid lipsticks and I got the shade Soft Lilac, which I am wearing now. There's definitely fewer shades to pick from in the Anastasia range. This one and Pure Hollywood are the only two that kind of caught my eye. This is quite pink for me. I do like it, but it's maybe not like an everyday color for me because it's a little bit out of my comfort zone and it is quite pink. I'd never tried any of the Anastasia liquid lipsticks before. They're still quite new, I think, and I absolutely love it. The packaging is probably the best out of any liquid lipstick I've tried. It feels really nice quality without being too heavy. The applicator, I don't even know what's different about it, but I like the, the length because the Kat Von D ones I find too long. I like the length of it, the application's really easy and the formula just feels really creamy. It does dry down to a matte, but it feels really comfortable on the lips. I have only just got these, so I haven't tried wearing it for like a whole day and reapplying it, but first impressions, I really, really like these. So I really want that pure Hollywood shade. Okay, so let me talk you through the Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipsticks that I got because I did get four shades, I can't believe I got four, I know, I'm mad. So the reason I made this order in the first place was because of this shade, which is Bow and Arrow, and I've seen so many people talk about this shade. It's a light brown nude, and it looks pretty gross in the tube, I think, but it does look nicer on the lips once it's dried down. I found that this, as one of the lighter shades, didn't apply as nicely as the kind of darker reds that I already own. I've mentioned before that I don't love the packaging. I find that the applicator is far too long. And I found this one applied a little bit patchy, but after two coats, it was opaque. And when I first applied it, I thought this is far too brown and like murky colored. But once it dries down, I think it looks really nice. And it's a really nice kind of modern, but 90s lip and brownie nude kind of thing. The next one I got is Lovesick, which I think is quite similar to the one I'm wearing now from Anastasia. It's more of a pink, again, quite different to what I normally wear. I normally stay away from the pinks, but it's like a soft everyday pink. And I looked at swatches online and thought this looked like something I'd quite like to try. And I'm happy I got it. It's a little bit too bubblegum pink for me, but really nice. And again, because it's one of the lighter shades, I found it applied a little bit patchy at first, but after like the second layer, it dried opaque and looked really pretty on the lips. So that's the second shade that I got. And then the third one is called Double Dare. It took so long for me to pick which shades I wanted, but I looked at so many swatches online. Maybe I'll do a blog post with my Kat Von D liquid lipsticks and swatches. Seeing as I found the swatches online so helpful, let me know if you guys would be interested in that. Double Dare is an interesting shade. It's kind of got a bit of pink in it, a bit of brown, and maybe a bit of coral as well. But I think on the lips, it looks really nice actually, and the tones suit my skin tone. And I'm glad I got this one. It applied really nicely, just like the other darker shades that I own. They always feel a, a bit wet at first, but then you just kiss your lips together and they soon dry down and they really do last for such a long time. Okay, and the final shade I got is Lolita, and there's Lolita and Lolita 2. But I looked online, and I think Lolita 2 looked a little bit too like terracotta for me. I think that's what I decided in the end. Lolita is again, just a nice kind of brownie, nudey, mauvey color. Can you sense a pattern here? I'm really into these sort of shades at the moment, and they're all quite similar, apart from the bright pinks. I just wanted to kind of compare 
and see which one I fall in love with, but I think I'm, I'm gonna love them all. This one's definitely one of my favorites. I really like it, it's a little bit darker. This one could definitely be worn in the evening as well. And I find these sort of shades are so easy to pair with just like a neutral brown eyeshadow. So yeah, I think this one's really nice as well and I'm happy I picked that up. That's actually everything I ordered. It's not that much stuff, although I did get five liquid lipsticks. I can't believe I did that and I still really want the Kylie liquid lip kits. If any of you guys have tried them, let me know what you think and if they are worth obsessing over and paying for the shipping. Also, let me know what else you've bought from Sephora recently because whenever I do a Sephora order, I always like to get quite a lot so it's like worth the shipping but then I never really know what to get. So let me know what you've picked up recently and what you've loved. I have my March favorites video coming up on Sunday. And if you haven't seen my last video, it was a tour of my living room kind of kitchen space. So I will put that here if you want to go and have a watch. And I'll see you guys on Sunday in my next video. Thanks for watching, bye.